Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Dark Souls 3 walkthrough. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am, and today we're going to be making our way through the Road of Sacrifices. But before we do, like always, let's go ahead and talk about everything I did off screen. And really, all I did was farm up a ton of souls, 70,000 souls to be precise. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we're going to come over here to the Handmaiden, and we're going to give her some Umbral Ash. Ah, Go ahead and give her the Mortician's Ashes. Gracious, passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> and she's going to have a few new items to be able to buy from her. But more importantly, she's going to have the grave key. We want to buy that now. And we're going to go ahead and buy the tower key as well. You don't have to buy it right now, but as soon as we get to the Cathedral of the Deep, you're going to want to at least have bought it at some point in between. We're just going to buy it now. Ashen one. Okay, let's go ahead and level up our bow and upgrade our Estus flask. That is good, wasn't it? So we can have an extra one. We only need one more Titanite shard and we can level it up again. Let's reinforce our flask. Pretty be careful. I don't. <laughs> and then we're going to talk to Cornix. Ah, oh, there you are, unkindled one. I wish to express my gratitude for trusting a lowly pyromancer and allowing me to gaze upon this majestic flame. As promised, I will impart pyromancies to you. But first, you'll need a flame of your own. Careful you don't burn yourself with it. <laughs> to learn pyromancies, you must vow to become my pupil. I know, I know, but such is the way of the world. Respect your elders and so on. And pyromancy, of course, is no exception. <laughs> oh, we'll need a pyromancy tome to learn more advanced pyromancies. Though unorthodox, that would be the most expedient way to make progress. If this were the Great Swamp, and you had the luxury of time, we could have trained you the hard way. <laughs> to learn pyromancy, I know, and... <laughs> Just making sure he didn't have any extra dialogue. So you can reinforce the pyromancy flame he just gave us. In Dark Souls 1, all you needed was souls to upgrade it, but in Dark Souls 3, you are going to need Titanite shards. So keep that in mind. We can also purchase the Pyromancy armor set from him. And we can learn a couple of Pyromancies from him. I'm going to grab Flash Sweat. This is going to increase our fire damage absorption. And we'll be using that uh, later. Much, much later on into the walkthrough, actually. Do not be gone for long. What is a teacher without a pupil? <laughs> we're gonna come up these stairs we're gonna talk to Ludlith or Ludlith however you pronounce his name I'm just gonna call him Ludlith because it feels more comfortable for me to say it that way fret not fret not my feet are here firmly planted for I am a lord and this is my throne Let's go ahead and give him the transposing kiln. Oh, belike it is 
a transposing kiln in thy possession. Seen better days, but methinks it shall suffice. Now, bring to me a twisted soul. Transposition is the art of extracting and coalescing the essence of a soul. In transposing a twisted soul, its true power transferreth to thee. Thy purpose is to seek lords and slay them. What's to fear in a little transposition now? So with the souls that we have got from Vort and the Rotted Great Wood, we can trade in some items. Now we also see two other items that we don't have a soul for. And the only reason we see this is because we killed that stray demon earlier in the undead settlement. So that it's kind of showcasing some of the things you can get a little later on into the game. There's um, the Hollow Slayer Greatsword. Really good sword if you're fighting anything that's undead. You'll do more damage to it. I'm not going to get any uh, of these items just because um, I don't feel like they're very necessary. The only thing that I would say is good uh, right here is the Pontiff's Left Eye. If you're using a weapon that has fast attacks, you can recover HP really fast with putting this ring on now if you're trying to get the trophy to get all rings you are going to need the pontiff's left eye not going to grab any of this i'm just going to sell the souls that i have the boss souls but if you want any of this stuff go ahead and grab it now treat the firekeeper not with discourtesy she is much like thee prisoners both kept to link the fire. I'm gonna hop off here. Let's talk to Hawkwood. You haven't given up yet. Then you're a brasher lad than I thought. You can make better use of this. He's gonna give us the heavy gym? I don't need it. Not now I've flown the coop. <laughs> <laughs> the undead legion of Farron is a caravan of undead, sworn by wolf's blood to contain the abyss. The legion will bury a kingdom at the first sign of exposure. Joyous bunch, really. Gaining admission to the legion is a matter of some ceremony. Inside their keep, snuffing out the flames of three altars, opens the door to the wolf blood. Even accursed undead want to believe they're special, it seems. I pity the sorry souls. <laughs> so if you use that heavy gym on a weapon, it will boost the strength um, scaling uh, up depending on what it's already scaling with you know if it's already scaling with strength it's going to boost it even higher to A or S class or B you know depending on the weapon just figured I'd throw that out there let's go ahead and talk to ring finger Leonard well hasn't it been some time I'm Leonard the ring finger remember me I slipped you those red eyes some time ago. You're making quite an effort of it, so I thought you might like to know. If you yearn for a proper red eye orb, one that is uncracked, then kill the Dark Wraith, survivor of the land swallowed by darkness. He has been a prisoner for many ages in the deepest cell in all Lothric. I can see it in your eyes. If you didn't invade, didn't pillage, whatever would you do? <laughs> I love his attire. I know I said that in the last episode, I think. I said it in the last episode. But I really do love his attire and his mask. Let's come over here to the handmaiden. Ah, ha. Or shrine handmaid. 
I don't know why I keep calling her a maiden. We're gonna sell these boss souls, or at least I'm gonna sell them. Ashen, huh? And then we're gonna level up real fast. Welcome, speak very well. Then taken. So we'll put two. Well, not two, but we'll put one into endurance, one into vitality, and then one into vigor. One more into endurance, one into vitality. I guess, <laughs> I guess you could have put two in there. Jeez. And then that should be good. We just need one more to dex. Farewell, Ashen One. May the. Now, real quick, attunement, because um, we're going to be getting an NPC soon, you can attune spells. The more attunement you have, the more spells you can use. Right now, we only have one empty slot, which I'm pretty sure throughout the whole game, we're only going to have one slot, but you can get a ring that will allow you to get an extra slot just in case you need it. Let's go ahead and equip the flash sweat. And then we're going to burn an undead bone shard. This is our first undead bone shard. What this is going to do is allow us to heal for more health whenever we use an Estus flask. Now we're going to travel over to the high wall of Lothric and go over to the tower on the wall. We're going to come down this way. Try not to get hit by this thief here. Like me. Because I'm a scrub. And then right here's the door that I talked about earlier in the walkthrough that we weren't going to open up until much later. Well, now we're opening it up. We're going to take this elevator down. Now, if you don't care about PvPing, you can skip this process. You do not have to fight this enemy. But if you want to PvP and invade other people's worlds, you're going to want this item here. We're going to sneak up behind this guy here this is a fairly tough enemy he can be parried he can be parried fairly easily actually and then we get the red eyed orb he also dropped a pale tongue that is not a guaranteed drop but if you're wanting to do a certain covenant you can um Farm some pale tongues from him. Rosaria's covenant is what I'm talking about, but we have not got to her just yet. We're going to go to the top, climb this ladder, and we're going to go back to the bonfire. This time, we're going to go over to the undead settlement. We're going to go to travel, go to the undead settlement, and then we're going to go over to the dilapidated bridge bonfire. We're going to go across the bridge, and then we're going to get a running jump, get a punching attack on that big old rat. Nice, we got a large soul of a deserted corpse. There's some rats down that way. Every now and then they'll uh, aggro to you, but most of the time they won't. Just go through this door and you'll be just fine. Grab this loincloth. And then I did not mean to go into the uh, shrine of Velka. So how this works at this statue is if you have 
pretty much pissed off an enemy, like they're mad at you, or you've killed, or not, not an enemy, I'm sorry, if you've pissed off an NPC and they're mad at you and, you know, they're very aggressive trying to kill you, you can come here and you can request absolution, which will forgive all your sins. Also, if you've killed an NPC, not including Ludlith, that doesn't count as a sin. Don't know why, but it doesn't. Um, you can come and request absolution and then they will no longer be mad at you. Also, if you want to cure your hollowing where you look like beef jerky, you can request dissolution and that will reverse the hollowing process, but it will break the quest line for the Dark Lord ending. So it's up to you on if you want to do that. It also costs a ton of souls. So the higher the level you are, the more souls it's going to cost to reverse the hollowing along with, I believe, if the hollowing is higher, it will cost more as well. Now we're going to come over here, get ourselves the red hilted halberd. And then we're going to have some skelly boys over here. Should be pretty easy to kill them. And we might be able to get an extra level to top off our um, levels of being 17 across the board. So we'll, when we go back to Firelink, we'll uh, go back to the um, Firekeeper and level up one more time. That way our strength can be at 17 as well. But make sure whenever you come into this encounter, kill the one behind you first and then focus on the one that's going to be in front of you. And also be careful because every now and then the evangelist, she'll fall down. And then you have to deal with her before you can deal with the crystal lizard. So we're going to run at this crystal lizard. Try to run to the right so it'll run into the wall. Get another heavy gem. And then right here, we're going to run, grab this item, and back away. We got one of those pot boys that's going to drop down on top of us. So be very careful. Also, I did, when I was farming up souls over here in the undead settlement, I did get the great machete from him. Well, not from that particular one, but one of them. Over here, we're about to get an awesome shield for us. We're going to shoot down this body. I love this shield. At least early in the game, I love this shield. This is the Blessed Red and White Shield plus one. Now, you can get a regular red and white shield. The only reason it's blessed is because it's got a blessed gem in it. And whenever you have a blessed gem in a shield or a weapon of any sort, it's going to slowly heal you along with doing holy damage to undead enemies. So you'll do extra damage to undead enemies. And some enemies, you'll have to kill them twice if you don't have a blessed gem in your weapon. But if you have a blessed gem in it, you can outright kill them. So you don't have to kill him that second time. But we have a passive heal. It's very slow. We can get a ring later on into the game that will help stack on our healing. So we'll heal a little faster. Get the Saint's Talisman. And over here, we're going to have an NPC named Arena. Let's go ahead and talk to her. Oh, who is there? Is someone there? Anyone? Oh, please. Whoever you are, touch me. The dark surrounds me, nibbles at my flesh. Little creatures. They never stop biting. So please, hold out your hand. 
and touch me. Let's go ahead and touch her. Ah, oh, yes, there you are. So close, indeed. Then I am not entirely alone just yet. Praise the merciful gods above. So for doing that, we get the prayer gesture. Oh, forgive me. I am Irina of Karim. I came to this land so that I might be a firekeeper. Your touch has freed me from the darkness. You are a champion then. I am weak and unfit to tend the flames. But if it would not trouble you, might I enter into your service instead? Let's accept her service. Oh, thank you, sweet champion. I shall take my vows. I, Irina of Karim, solemnly swear to serve you. Now let's open up this door, and this is going to send us right out here to where Egon was, who mocked us earlier into the uh, episode, probably midway into the episode last episode. You've gone and rescued her, have you? How very quaint. Pitying creatures that are beyond help. <laughs> yeah. Very well. I'm sick of looking after her at any rate. I am Egon, a knight of Karim. I am allied to you for as long as you assure the girl's safety. And only for that long. So now we can summon him in in certain areas. He's actually pretty beefy. Really good summon. Let's go ahead and use a Homeward Bone and go back to the Firelink Shrine. Real quick, let's come over here to the Firekeeper. Welcome, speak. I'm gonna Very level well up taken. one time. Oh, it was our dex, not our strength. Either way. Farewell, I made of And then if we come over here, we can hop down and talk to Arena. Oh, champion of Ash. Welcome back. I was not meant to be a firekeeper, but I am honored to serve you beside the bonfire. The gods are ever merciful. My gratitude lies with them and with you. I am yours now. Your wish is my command. You know, in my home of Karim, I was a nun. I would be pleased to share the tales of miracles with you. Although, to be honest, I only know a few. But if I had a divine tome, I could tell you many tales and more. Oh. Only I cannot see. Terribly sorry, but you'll have to find me a divine tome in Braille. Let's go ahead and look at some of the miracles that she can teach us. There's quite a few, but one that I know a lot of people are going to like is the Homeward. And really what that'll do is allow you to go back to the bonfire that you last rested at or the Firelink Shrine. Essentially, it's a Homeward Bone without having to use a Homeward Bone. Although you are going to need at least 18 Faith to be able to use it. And the rest are uh, healing spells and uh, also like a curing of ailments like poison and stuff like that. She's also got a ring that you can purchase. This is a Saint's Ring. I was talking about this earlier. What this will allow you to do is get one extra attunement slot. 
Have a pleasant journey, Champion of Ash. I pray for your safety. So if you want an extra attunement slot, buy the Saints Ring. If you don't care, like me, don't bother with it. Oh, looks like uh, Hawkwood is gone. We're going to go uh, outside of Firelink Shrine here in just a moment and see uh, where Hawkwood's at. Let's talk to Ringfinger Leonard. Aha, you found a proper red eye. Brilliant. I knew you were no ordinary man. So for doing all that, we get the applause gesture. Now invade and pillage all you like. And if you grow weary of your duty, you too may become a finger. Come on, give yourself to Rosaria of the Cathedral of the Deep. <laughs> now let's go outside. We're going to veer off to the left. There shouldn't be a dog, but don't quote me on that. Hawkwood usually kills this. Let's go ahead and talk to him for a second. The poor wretched souls. Be they lord or legend, the curse shows no mercy. What a sham. Okay, so this event right here is very, very random. And... Honestly, the only way you're going to know that he's out here kind of uh, lamenting at that grave is if you do not see him at his usual spot because he doesn't move. He only moves to one place and that is over by that grave. Now let's go ahead and rest at this bonfire and then we are going to travel to the road of sacrifices. Right here we have our first Corvian. You want to be very careful with these enemies. They'll sprout wings and then get like super fast. Like they'll jump at you and do a lot of erratic attacks. So take them out as fast as you can. Whenever you see them start to sprout wings, smack them as fast as you can and kill them as fast as you can. We're going to bypass those guys. We want to run over here. Take this guy out because if he screams, those guys are going to sprout wings immediately. And that is bad news bears. You do not want that. Take those guys out. Also, we got a shriving stone earlier. Um, after we grab this item, I'll explain a little more about a shriving stone. So a shriving stone is an item that you can bring to Andre. If you have imbued your weapon with, like to make it uh, refined so it's quality or strength or fire or whatever, you can use a Shriving Stone to take that off and be able to re-imbue it with something else. All right, let's continue on now. We're going to come over here. We're going to hop down. Grab ourselves the Brigand Axe. And then right here, we have an NPC that if you've ever played Dark Souls 1, looks very similar to Maneater Mildred. She even carries the Butcher Knife, which is a really good strength weapon. So if you're playing as a strength build, the Butcher Knife is a very good one to start out with. Grab the Brigand Armor. And then over here, we're going to get some quality daggers, which is the Brigand Twin Daggers. So if you're doing a quality build, but you want something faster than the Claymore, use those Brigand Daggers. You will not regret it. And if you do, I apologize. You can blame it on me. We're going to take the road up here. 
Take out a couple more Corvians. Again, kill them before their wings sprout. Got another Shriving Stone. So across the way, we can see a bridge. We are not going to be crossing that bridge. We're actually going to run straight over here. And right here in this crevice, we're going to hop down. And we're going to have two dogs to deal with. Be very careful. Dogs suck in any Souls game. These ones are extra crappy because they can poison you. Like they, they spit some poison stuff at you. Oh my goodness. It's like circling around me. But we found ourselves a divine tome of Kareem. And we also pick up the Morn's Ring. That will boost all your miracles. So if you're playing a faith build, you're going to want to put that ring on. Take that guy out. And then take that guy out. And these two guys, as fast as you can. And then up top, run right over here. He already screamed. That sucks, but it's okay. We'll take care of this guy as he comes over here. Come on, run over here, bud. Did you just kill yourself? Nope, you did not. Ah, no, don't kill me. <laughs> it's so scary when they grow their wings. So right up there, the item that we got was an ember. You can never have enough of those. But right here, soon as you step into this area, be prepared to be invaded. This is a highly, highly um, invaded area if you're playing online. So just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and light this bonfire and then we're gonna talk to these NPCs. Oh, hello. How do you do? I am Anri of Astora unkindled like you. This is Horace, a friend and traveling companion. Are you too in search of the Lords of Cinder? We are well along the road of sacrifices. Below us is the crucifixion woods. Beyond the flooded woods lies Farron Keep, home of the undead legion. Further yet is the Cathedral of the Deep. We seek the cathedral, home of the grim Aldrich. We may go our separate ways now, but we are both seekers of lords. The next time we cross paths, one may find the other in a time of need. May the flames guide your way. Oh yes, Horace. He's not very talkative. But don't think ill of him. He's an upstanding, kind-hearted knight, a fine partner for this grueling journey. Without his help, I would have cursed this onerous duty long ago. So real quick, I just want to make a note of this for everybody. If you're playing as a male, Anri is going to be a female. If you're playing as a male, or not a male, if you're playing as a female, then um, Anri is going to be a male. So whichever um, gender you're playing as, Anri is going to be the opposite. Because you can do the quest line like we're doing, the Dark Lord quest line, where they're going to become your husband or your wife. Let's go ahead and talk to Horace. <laughs> He's going to give us the Blue Sentinel's uh, Covenant item. Such riveting dialogue he has. And if you want, you can put that on. It essentially does the same thing as the Way of the Blue. So it doesn't matter which one um, you put on. It, it's going to do the same thing. I'm keeping on the uh, Warrior of Sunlight. Let's go ahead and reset this bonfire and head back to Firelink Shrine. We have a new NPC here at Firelink Shrine. Let's go ahead and talk to her. Hmm. 
You're an unkindled, aren't you? I am Cirrus, of the Sunless Realms, former servant of the Divinity. Duties we each bear, but one's duty is a solitary affair. I doubt we've much to gain from fraternization. Blessing of the Moon upon your journey. We will learn more about her story a little later. For now, let's come over to Andre. It is what neat. And we're going to reinforce our bow again. Now we just need four more Titanite shards, and then we'll have it as a plus three. Pretty, I go. <laughs> going to come over here. We're going to give this Braille Tome to Arena. Oh, Champion of Ash, do you wish to... Oh, you've brought me a braille divine tome. Now I can tell new tales of miracles. Tales of the greater miracles can be quite the epics. What fun we will have. <laughs> she doesn't have anything new to purchase, but she does have some new miracles. Number one, she has the med heal. Really good one to have. She's also got the Tears of Denial. So when your HP hits zero, you essentially get a second chance. It, it'll automatically heal you and then you get another chance. You can back up and kind of assess your situation. Really good um, miracle to have, especially if you're playing um, a faith build or any kind of build. Honestly, it only costs 15 faith and that's just a drop in the bucket compared to how many levels you're going to get. She'll also have force. This is a really unique um, miracle. You can push enemies and uh, invaders away from you. It's pretty cool. Have a pleasant day, I pray. Now that we got all that done, we're going to run to the top here and then we're going to end the video. Because when we come back, we are going to be exploring Farron Keep. And Farron Keep is, in my opinion, a hot mess. It's not that bad, but it has its moments. So with all that being said, I want to start by telling everybody, thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night. Whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off. <laughs>